And Deputy Connolly. Yeah, just myself. I'm just, you might clarify just my amendment. I tabled it today. Um, after we dispose of amendment number one, we'll yeah. be in a position to deal with Sherman. And the Minister might indicate if she's accepting that amendment. It's a request from the Mental Health Commission to give them supervision and regulatory powers in relation to community facilities, which is one of the problems here. I went straight to the Mental Health Commission um, website to see what they had been saying about it. And of course, they couldn't say anything about it because they don't have regulatory authority. That's going to be included in the legislation Great. coming this year. It's thank an important you. part of it. And Th thank you for raising that. Th thank you. Thank you, Minister, and you're accepting that. And again, I'm not going to waste my time praising you tonight, Minister, but I really, it's beyond endurance that the senior minister is not here. And again, we're, thank you to Sinn Féin for using their private member's time. But I did ask you to put it on the agenda, because if we're this, this report, with its implications for all of the camps throughout the country, and if we can see fit to discuss that of itself as a subject, to look at the findings, to look and at the findings of this report and see what we're learning from it. And I, I said the last time we might as well resign because I'm only here since 16 and I, I have been given to serious moments of despair, not at the problems we face, but at our failure to take action and report after report. So I'm old enough to know about planning for the future, which was the 80s. Then we had the vision for change and then sharing the vision. And of course, we had the update on the legislation and all of the time we've the most serious difficulties on the ground. So I look then to the, um, and again, you might update us tonight on the um, monitoring because I've, I never had any faith in myself even, not to mention all other politicians in relation to implementing reports. And that's why we need an independent outside organization to monitor and tell us whether sharing the vision, I'm still stuck with the vision for change, because to me it was a perfect document where the imperfection came was the failure to implement utterly. And the, as I said, the implementation body set for two, three years and then was disbanded. They did such a good job. So hopefully this implementation body will do the same thing. So look, I looked at the Mental Health um, Mental Health Commission to see what they said. And in, in 2017, they expressed concerns about CAMs in inpatients units in 2017. They do have regulatory power over that. And they also pointed out that CAMs has had to provide services for mild and moderate mental distress due to the lack of primary care psychology facilities. And of course, primary care strategy was rolled out 20 years ago, but never implemented, and it would have taken some of the pressure off. So children are inappropriately being referred to the CAMS units. And, and then when they are there, they're being inappropriately treated, and amongst many other things. So while I have a few minutes, I'm just going to go back to the actual findings. And again, I have difficulty uh, with the word essentially independent, but the, the effects were so bad that it transcends my, my problems with essentially independent. But for a statement of finding to say, no extreme or catastrophic harm had occurred in the 1,332 cases considered between July and April, I really have no idea why that statement is in there. This is catastrophic harm set out at two, three and four, but yet we're being told, now to me that's health executive speak, and I have never seen it in it, and the health executive were instrumental in producing this report, notwithstanding the sterling work of the independent chair. And they go on to tell us that 227 children managed by a non-consultant doctor uh, where the diagnosis or a treatment exposed them to the risk of significant harm by way of one or more of the following. Sedation, emotional and cognitive blunting, growth disturbance, serious weight changes, metabolic and endocrine disturbance and psychological distress and so on. Number three, 13 other children were found to have been unnecessarily exposed to a risk of harm under the care of other doctors in the service. Now, other doctors. And then there was clear evidence, number four, of significant, significant harm. But they feel obliged to tell us it wasn't catastrophic. But significant harm to 46 children in the files that were reviewed, and they give out a list of, of them, and various things have been said. So 
that's a review following an internal audit. I'm not sure why the triggers didn't take off at that point to do an audit of all the CAMs throughout the country, both community and inpatients. Surely that would have been a very obvious thing to do. And if we look at that report, and I'll work backwards maybe in the time I have, and we see three consultants left in the last year and this independent review is telling us it is of concern that we have learned that three consultants in the county MHS area have tendered their resignation in the last year alone. I, I, I had so many things marked out here to go through methodically, but I'm not going to get the chance to do that, Minister. But well, a governance group was set up in 2019. They raised concerns. Concerns were raised back as far as 16. There was diagnostic concerns, treatment concerns. There was the role of the private agents, agencies in giving in um, to temporary doctors. There were family queries. The, I was going to say the poor families. The very concerned families did their best to raise their concerns, were ignored, made phone calls, were ignored, and so on, all set out. The maximum risk was set out when they did do a risk assessment in relation to the absence, the um, vacancy. The risk, the risk was 25 out of 25. So what jumps out for me here is that there were good staff on the ground who really tried to bring concerns to the attention of management and nothing was acted on. We have one specific whistleblower and I'd really like you to tell me tonight what um, review has been done in relation to how he was treated. Because if we're utterly reliant on a whistleblower, he, be, be it he or she, and we treat them so badly, then I, I, it's impossible to have faith in the system. J just absolutely impossible. The language used by the health executive and I have to say publicly I am not one bit impressed with the comments from the CEO of the health executive in relation to this matter. National managers were aware that there were problems down in South Kerry. That means the CEO Mr Reid had to be aware as well and if he wasn't then he should be asking how he's not been alerted to it and then we have a minister of state being repeatedly sent in here to face all of this. It's totally unacceptable to deal with us like that. In relation to the language being used, this, uh, they had a particular method that they use, I think it's, I forget the actual four letters of it, the, the, the actual independent uh, chairperson find the, finds the analogy useful of traffic congestion and cars being backed up on a road and on a motorway. He actually finds that helpful in relation to the analysis of clinical cases and a backlog with clinical cases. And I picked that out specifically because to me that's what's happened with language. Language, when I look at this and all of the governance documents, means absolutely nothing. And when the courageous person comes forward, their life is made a misery. Now, I had the privilege of working in a previous life as a psychologist. I had the privilege of working for the health board. And I have to tell you, in the bad times, the service was 40 times better because at least language meant something. And so if we look here at the Mental Health Commission and the themed reports done by Dr. Susan Finnerty, and I understand she's now doing an examination of South Kerry as well, she has repeatedly highlighted for all TDs to see the difficulties in relation to mental health generally, in relation to COVID, the very badly designed buildings that we need to take action about as, as, a, as a doll, in relation to mental health and the drugs that are given, that the physical health of the person and suffering from mental health issues utterly neglected. She highlights it year after year in themed reports. She's highlighted that physical health is utterly neglected, that people suffering from mental health problems die 15 to 20 years before their time. 15 to 20 years, year after year, this has been pointed out to us. I'm not blaming you at all, Minister. I'm saying we know all of this information. So my sense of frustration intensifies with each session that we have statements. And tonight, I thank Sinn Féin for allowing it. But it should be yourself, Minister, the senior minister, laying out this report before us and what's happening as a result of it, as, as opposed to us being grateful to Sinn Féin for using their private members' time. And then I'm aware today of, of, of my question. How many draft reports are sitting 
in various offices in Tusla and the health executive throughout the country as we speak, where whistleblowers have bravely come forward, a report is done, and the word draft remains on it ad nauseum. Would you be aware? Yeah, well, it, you, if you could check, it would be very helpful of brave and courageous people coming forward, managers, some of them, doctors, nurses, coming forward, and they go to all this trouble, and then the draft report remains with Tusla at their board or somewhere in the health executive, and, and, and junior ministers have to come in here and face the fire, as opposed to a, re, a, a proactive system that highlights problems and learns from them, not in a punitive fashion, but before we get to the punitive stage and somebody should Thank be held deputy. responsible in, sorry, I beg your pardon. Thank you in we'll relation to this. To